the trend. An uptrend, as we all know, has a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. A downtrend has a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. The trend can be different on different time frames. I have a, a friend who's written voluminously on, uh, on markets, and he says every market is always trending on every time frame. And now that we can look at so many different time frames, we can certainly see that. And here's a, help, a way to help identify the swings that make up the trend. This helps me to see the, the swing highs and sle swing lows a little bit more clearly. A swing high is complete when the first bar makes a high. The second bar is either an inside bar or it has an equal or lower high and lower low than the first bar. And the third bar has a lower low than either of the first two bars. I like to have the third bar close below the low of the first two bars. I hope this applies as well to stocks. I'm sure it can. Uh, I, know, I know I love it for futures. A swing low is complete when the first bar makes a low. The second bar is either an inside, inside the low bar or it has an equal or lower, I'm sorry, equal or higher low and higher high than the first bar. And the third bar has a higher high than either of the first two bars. I like to have the third bar close above the highs of the first two bars. And why do swings matter? Well, the swings show us the trend. They show us the higher lows in a bull market and lower highs in a bear market. In a bull market, a close below the swing low that preceded the highest high breaks the pattern of higher highs and higher lows. In a bear market, a close above the swing high that preceded the lowest low breaks the pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And here we're going to look at some examples. This is April Gold. April Gold had been moving along very nicely. Whoops. We can see that it was clearly moving up as we were coming in. We have a high bar there. I, think, I believe this bar had the, an equal high and a lower low, and this bar had a lower low, so we have a swing high. Down here, we have a swing low. We have a, low, a, a, a wide range reversal again. That would have been an excellent entry point for me. I, I don't remember if we did. Um, but that's the kind of entry I look for, a wide range bullish reversal in an uptrend. And then we have the, an inside day and a, a bar that traded higher. That gives us, that defines our swing low. Up here we have a swing high with a high bar, inside bar, whoops, and a lower low. So the three days uh, mark a swing. We continue the pattern until we get to here. The pattern doesn't work in triangles because they're narrowing. It requires, the, the particular three bar swing pattern uh, requires a widening correction. Uh, and and a, a triangle is a narrowing correction, so we have to just be aware of the significance of triangles. And in this case, the stop would be below the first low of the first leg, basically, of the triangle. Any questions about that? In this case, I like to exit on an equal or opposite reversal. If I entered on this wide range reversal, I probably would have exited there. However, I certainly would have exited here. The bears took it down. On the second day, the bulls pulled it back up. And when it broke below that low, I would have considered it a failure. And that was quite a significant failure. Gold has continued to decline. Uh, significantly since then. So I, I love that setup, or I like to watch for it. Uh, I consider that a swing failure. I, that's only my own personal term for that. I'm not sure how other people look at it. And here's a, uh, the, pa the swing high, the, the three bar pattern uh, in a downtrend on a weekly chart for the dollar index. The three bar pattern remained intact all the way through here, which is a considerable distance and considerable time. It has broken since then because the, because the dollar became so much more uh, bullish. And here's this, the three bar pattern on a, on a shorter, well, with covering a shorter term time frame. This is a, a little head and shoulders top that worked out very well, or I'm sorry, head and shoulders bottom that worked out very well. It had a target of a 970, I believe, and it did ultimately work, work out. We'll see. Here we have a close above the 
swing high that preceded the sw swing down to the low that broke the pattern of lower highs and lower lows on this chart and suggested that the market was going to go up in conjunction with the head and shoulders bottom, it gave us an excellent entry point. Here we see that way the move continued and it did reach the 970 target and then some. Came down a bit and in here we had one of those hurdle bars, what I consider my, uh, my key hurdles that I like to enter on and, and we did take a short position here risking a close above that high it appeared to be a lower high top I'm, I'm pointing this bar out because this is where we broke below the low the swing low that had preceded that high the market continued to decline now we were in at about 950 something and uh, our target was 800 I, we looked at this one earlier and it did reach the target a short time later. Yes, sir? Do you always enter an exit at end of day? Uh, if I see it happening, most of the markets resume trading the same day. So in those cases, I will wait, wait for uh, the new market to open before I enter. In the markets that close for the day and don't open until the next day, I'll often uh, jump the gun and, and enter just before the close. Let's see, here's just showing the swing highs and swing lows again. Uh, we show the entry in soybeans back here. This was where we broke support. I don't remember if this is where we entered or we entered just before that, but as you can see, the, swing, the pattern of swing highs and swing lows continued and it's remained intact ever since then. So those of you who trade soybeans and futures we'd know that that's a pretty significant move. It held all the way down to here, and now, well, there's still no sign that it's breaking. We looked at the corn head and shoulders top earlier, and this three bar swing pattern, that simple three bar swing pattern that we looked at has remained intact all the way down to here, and it, um, a move of several dollars in fifteen thousand dollars in uh, several dollars in corn and about fifteen thousand in the futures. That little British pound trade that wasn't exciting to me turned out to be quite a move. I felt that the other patterns were more distinctive than this one, but this uh, this three bar swing remained intact. Although you did have to hold through quite a correction, but it's remained intact all the way down. This is the OJ that we looked at. Once again, the three bar swing remained intact. That simple pattern remained intact all the way down. One, similar to the British pound, you would have had to live through a pretty significant correction, but it would have paid off. And now it, uh, we just had a three bar down, turned down here. Could be ready to uh, make a decline below that low. We'll see. Soybean meal had a very similar pattern to, uh, to soybeans. They pretty much uh, trade, uh, they trade very similarly, same, same family. And this pattern has remained intact all the way down. I wanted to show this one because if we just close above that high, we'll finally, after several months of it, after a three month decline or four month decline, we'll finally have a, a close above the high that made the low if we can just close above there that's uh that's one of the opportunities i'll be looking at this week about the swings swings define the trend i hope you learn to take i hope you take the time to learn to identify the swings a strong trend is usually fairly easy to see with practice the swings should be easy to see too if you have to work too hard to make it fit it probably doesn't matter that is, if you can't see it easily, it probably isn't key support or resistance. I'm going to go back. Whoops. I don't consider this swing terribly important. As I, I, was, I was trying to say on the next slide that some swings are more important than others. 
this one is so close to this one, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't take action if we just closed above that. I would at least want to close above this. As far as I'm concerned, this, this one is just, well, inside the other one. So some are more important than others, but in this case, it's remained intact anyway. I already said that the trend can vary in different time frames. I mentioned my friend who says the trend is, the market is always trending on every time frame. Every, every market is always trending on every time frame. Know what time frame you're trading and be consistent. I usually look at the daily. I hope I look at the weekly along with the daily. And I prefer to not look at the intraday. I am a day tra daily trader. The same friend who mentioned the, every market is always trending on every time frame said, uh, said he trades the S&Ps. I think he trades off five-minute charts. He said he wished he traded off of weeklies because he loves to golf. He said he thinks he could make just as much money if he traded off the weeklies. Uh, but, but for some reason, he's, he, he, I guess he's masochistic. He, he just wants to continue to day, day trade and skip the golf.